Hi guys and welcome to this special broadcast. My name is Hassan and I am a community specialist on the LEGO Ideas team. And well, we are live here today from the uh, LEGO store at uh, Shopping City Süd in Vienna, Austria. And you might ask why we are in Vienna. Well, it happens to be that we have a very special guest uh, who is right here, Felix Stiesen. Uh, and Felix, together with Valerie Rocher, were the co-fan designers of the LEGO NASA 7.5 project. Felix, how are you? I'm great. As Hassan said, I'm Felix and I'm one of the co-designers of the 7.5 project. And today we are doing a live, um, live interview and also um, a showcase of the model later. Thank you. So, please, before we continue, give Felix, a big, big thumbs up for being here tonight. We are so happy that you've decided to, to, to join us. Uh, it's really awesome. Um, before we jump into the questions, I do want to say that we have five awesome sets to give away to one of you guys. Um, and I think to make it even more special, what we'll do is get Felix to sign them. So uh, Felix, why don't you do that? And I will let you know how you can win one of these sets. All right, so it's pretty simple, really. If you want to win one of these exclusive signed sets by Felix, please just ask a question in the comments section below. Um, and after that, we will make sure to uh, pick five random winners who we'll, who we'll, we'll, we'll get in touch with uh, right after this. So Felix, you all good? Yes. <laughs> awesome. Well, I think uh, it's time to ask you some questions. So let's uh, head over here. All right. So I know that the LEGO Ideas community knows you. The AFOL community probably knows a lot about you. But the general fan, LEGO fan community might not know you so well. So tell me a bit about yourself. What is it that you do? Where are you from? And uh, how old are you? I'm 17 years old and I'm a student in Austria. I'm currently attending the um, Austrian equivalent of high school and in my spare time I love to build official Lego sets <laughs> as well as my own creations. Awesome. So you are 17 only. That is impressive. All our, many of our other fan designers, they tend to be a little up in age, but, uh, but this, is, this is quite something. So how did your interest in Lego start? Was it, uh, did you have a period uh, when in, your, in your teenage years where you uh, were not building so much? Actually, I, I have built Lego all my life long. I started building Lego when I was a child and from that point on I've never stopped building Lego. Because with my sister we already had a small collection of bricks at home and so I started to build my own models and yeah, um, I, I, um, I found Lego Puzo and so I decided why not give it a try and post something up there that I made. Awesome. And um, I mean, this is one impressive model uh, that has come to life. What was it that inspired you? Um, have you always been a, a fan of, of uh, space travel? Um, Personally, I have been a fan of space travel all my, all my, for pretty much as long as I can remember. And I particularly like the NASA Apollo 11 missions because the fact that humans were able to set their foot onto another celestial body was and still is very fascinating to me. And then on LEGO Cuso, I met Valerie, my collaborator, who is also a big LEGO and space fan, and so we decided to collaborate and do this awesome design. Awesome. So this was really inspired by, by that particular event. Uh, so instead of for instance, one of the, the other space missions, the SLS or, or SpaceX. This was really your, your big passion. Yeah, the moon landing is something special for me. And obviously the Saturn V rocket was the heaviest and most powerful rocket launch ever. So it's quite a cool model to build in LEGO. So we found out uh, quite an interesting fact, really, that you and Valerie, who you collaborated with, have never actually met in person. So that, that uh, Lego being a very physical uh, building material, what, uh, how, how was that 
uh, a challenge for you guys? Were there any pros and cons to, to working in this way? One challenge that came with our long distance collaboration was that um, naturally we couldn't build on the model at the same time. However, LEGO Digital Designer offered us the great um, possibility to um, build, build it digitally and then send the file back and forth and every time we changed something, we discussed the changes and thought whether we should keep them or not. Was it, I mean, was, was this a very long process? I mean, it was difficult to, to pass it back and forth. How did you keep yourself motivated to, to do that? Um, yes, it took us quite a long time to finish the model. And of course, it's great to have another collaborator who keeps you motivated to do progress on the model. Because I think if one of us had decided to build it alone, it would not have been finished. So it's always great to have a collaborator. And you're actually collaborating on uh, in another project right mm -hmm. now, right? Or two projects, I believe. Yes, um, um, currently online, there's a Fiat Cinquecento, uh, Fiat 500, um, a car model. And I built it together with Gabriele Zanotti, who is a, um, a great Lego fan from Italy. And he does um, remarkable renders. And actually, he also has a real Fiat 500. So that's, I got cool material pictures from him so we could do a great replica. And there's also another project online, uh, the Heavyland DHC2 Beaver plane, which um, was designed by me and Gabriele did the, did the images, which are very great. Cool. So I just want to ask you about your LEGO Ideas experience because you've been through a lot now over the past, uh, well, few years. Um, how, how has it been? I mean, how was... Uh, how did you feel when, when you got the call that, uh, that this rocket was going to be made? Before the success of the Apollo 11 rocket, I actually posted many, many other projects which are unfortunately not as successful. But I think that's what makes LEGO Ideas a good thing. You can post projects and you learn how to get better and progressively your project quality increases. And one thing I learned about posting um, LEGO projects is that the presentation of the actual models is also um, very important because you can build a great model but if the presentation isn't good it's not going to get any attention um, so that's one piece of advice that I would give is to do um, a great presentation for your actual model awesome um, so a rocket like this I imagine is not built overnight how long did it take? I mean, what, what kind of uh, workload, um, how many versions did you create? I think almost a year of development went into the rocket before we actually submitted it to LEGO Ideas. And even while it was gaining support, we kept posting updates, introducing new features, additions or improvements. And so development took us about two years, I would say. And Every time we changed something on the rocket, we made a new LED file and kept the old versions. In the end, we had two different versions, one called the Lux version, which had interior, like fuel tanks, and one called the basic version, which, which was also cool looking, um, the same looking from the outside, but due to the lack of the interior, it had much less pieces and was much more economic. Um, with a set like this, you've talked a lot about LED. And you've only built it in LDD, is that not correct? Yes, we actually tried it to build it in real life, but due to the high brick count, we unfortunately weren't able to build it in real life. It would <laughs> just have been too expensive for us. That's always uh, the challenge with, uh, with, with fans who are creating their, their own uh, big models. Um, so just to, to round off for, 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 for now, um, do you have any advice for any budding LEGO Ideas members who, who really want to, to, to get engaged on, on the site? Um, you already mentioned um, uh, the picture quality, but I mean, are there any good tips that you think uh, you know, people can benefit from? Yeah, as I said, presentation is a big tip. You have to do great presentation. And also, my advice is not to give up. Um, it took me almost 30 projects to get where I am now. And yeah, don't give up. Um, if your project doesn't reach 10,000 immediately, maybe rebuild it and change some bits and then post it again. Um, so don't give up and post your designs. Yeah.
Perseverance. That's how you get to it, right? All right. So we've just finished a bit of Q and A here, and I think what's really going to be exciting is for Felix to get hands on with the model. He's already actually built it, but uh, it's standing right here, and um, I think I'll uh, hand over to Felix, who will guide you through uh, this amazing model. Okay, then. The entire set includes 1,969 pieces, which is incidentally also the year that Apollo 11 landed on the moon, 1969. As you can see, the set includes three blue stands, which also come with the set, which allow you um, to display the rocket horizontally. That's also great for e those of you who don't have a ridiculously huge shelf. Okay, now I'm going to take a closer look at the actual rocket. The rocket is almost, is almost perfectly one meter tall, and it has many great details on the outside. It's also very sturdy for its size. The first stage, just like the real one, includes five very detailed Rocketdyne F1 engines. There are also great details such as the printed pieces on the outside. For example, these USA printed pieces and the American flag above. There is also this great section created with one by two grill pieces, which breaks up the texture. And there's even this fuel line on the outside. Moving on to the second stage. The second stage includes five highly detailed J2 rocket engines. Again, on the outside there are many details, like these printed pieces, or again these one by two grilled pieces. I think the transition between second and third stage was also done very well. This conical shape is difficult to recreate with Lego. You can also um, take off the launch escape system, just like the real version, and swap it out with the included um, actual capsule with a detailed print on it. Now let's separate the final third stage. The third stage has a single J2 engine, which is also quite detailed. And once again, the outside of the rocket also has cool details, like these um, little parts, which break up the um, plain outside of the black and white color scheme. But now let's get to the fun part of the actual rocket, the thing you've all been waiting for. Just like with the real version, these fairing pieces split up, revealing the actual lunar lander inside. Then you can perform a 180 degree turn with your command and service module and dock to the lunar lander and disconnect it from the third, third stage. Then, once you're at the moon, two of your three astronauts can transfer over into the lunar module and then be on their way to the surface. You can then deploy the landing gear and the eagle has landed. With the set also comes this cute little um, lunar surface vignette, which includes um, detailed astronauts with prints on their bodies. Those are actual little trophy pieces which got printed. The surface also includes this little piece, one by two tile, with an American flag printed onto it. Once you're done with your experiments, you can lift off with the ascent stage, dock again to the command module, go back into the capsule, and then ditch the ascent stage. Then you can be on your way back to Earth. Finally, once you um, re-enter Earth's atmosphere, uh, you um, separate the capsule and splash down safely in the ocean. With the set also comes this cute little splashdown scene, which includes, includes, includes for, uh, floating devices for the actual capsule. Okay, um, that's my little feature of the rocket. Felix, thank you, thank you so, so much for walking us through that. Uh, that was totally awesome. Um, so, we do want to ask you a few more things, and uh, I mean, you, you've had the chance to build this now, and I'm, I'm curious, what has been your favorite element in all of this? Do you have one? Um, I think the favorite element of the entire model is, as I mentioned, the um, transition between second and third stage. This was very difficult to recreate in our original proposal, because this conical shape is very difficult to build with Lego pieces. I think the designers did a superb job because it does not only look great, and it's, but it's also very stable. Also, the way that they connected these one by two grill pieces, both on the second 
uh, and the second and the third and the first stage is also really cool and a very unique technique and it's great fun building but also very challenging in the end you get a very sturdy model thank you felix so i think uh, we'll head over to some fan q and a's um so we've been uh, we've We've had a number of questions sent in, and I would like to uh, get to that. So, are you ready, Felix? Okay. All right. Jonathan here asks, what is your favorite Lego set? Mm, that's difficult. <laughs> right now, um, probably the Creator Expert sets. Um, the Creator Expert sets, the Expert line is really great because they include cool models with cool building techniques. A few years ago, I bought a Volkswagen and camper van, which is still one of probably my most favorite set. It includes many details and it's also great to build. So after June 1st, the Apollo will probably be your favorite set, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've got a few more questions. Um, Axel Garcia asks, was the 1969 pieces on purpose? Well, I'll go ahead and answer that question. Yes, it was. Well, it, the designers, the Lego designers, after hand taking over from Felix and Valerie's design, uh, were working on it. And uh, well, in their initial designs, they got close to that number. So they decided to work towards that target afterwards. Um, Tim asks, what was Felix's first Lego set? Do you remember that? Oh, is that uh, a long, long time ago? That's very difficult. Um, we already had some bricks at home because of my sister, but um, the first set I remember getting was an uh, excavator of the Lego City line, I think. <laughs> Lego City excavator, yeah. So, uh, Alexander, he asked, I cannot wait until this comes out. How did you determine how large you wanted this monster to be? Um, that's actually a great question because in our original design we started with the lunar module and we tried to build it as small as possible while still looking great and recognizable and we wanted it to fit into these cone parts which were also included in our original design so that's how we determined the scale for the entire model. Cool. Another two questions. Caleb, that was amazing. Excellent job Felix. What did you feel like when you built it originally? And what was the best design surprise for you? Mm, I felt great when we finally completed our model because we had never done something this big before. And obviously it was uh, a great feeling when the project made it into the review. Um, my favorite thing about the changes that the designers did is probably these um, one by two grill pieces, which we didn't include in our original set. And actually we didn't think this would be possible at this scale, but they showed us that it is possible and it's a very great result. All right, last question. What will be your next Lego Ideas project? We know that you already have the, uh, the Fiat 500 and the de Havilland, but uh, do you have anything else in the pipeline already? Mm, obviously I can't tell what the future may be. Business think. secrets, huh? <laughs> But um, Valerian and I would actually love to build a, a mobile launch tower and crawler for the model, for our set. But that would be difficult since there's a 3,000 part limit on the LEGO Ideas website. So uh, I don't know yet, but we might try to build one. Cool. Well, thank you. Um, we have actually reached out to uh, all five winners and uh, our team will get in touch with you about the giveaways of the five sets. So for now, thank you very, very much for joining us today. And um, if you are in Vienna tomorrow, May 27th, make sure to drop by the Lego store at Shopping City Süd because you'll be able to meet Felix from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. where you can get your, uh, a copy of your Saturn V set signed. Thank you.